Compound exercises are so important guys. I mean this is a given and quite frankly it's still being kinda ignored to this day if you think about it. Okay it's it's quite popular to to bench press, to deadlift and even to squat. But I'm not only talking about this, I'm referring to the concept of training on a compound heavy split. I mean I have always done like two compounds and then moved on to isolation movements and whatnot but I started thinking why not do more? I mean why not only do compounds? This program that I'm running right now is very very compound dominant I mean really dominant and I can tell because my central nervous system and body is quite fried afterwards but in a great way in today's video i'm gonna talk about why i think doing more compounds and especially doing them within a full body workout regime is very essential or at least a consideration of a must-do program i talked about full body workouts before I want to talk about them again because quite frankly they're being ignored. A lot of you out there, myself included, at least in the past, ignored full body workouts because to be honest they were boring or that was I used to think. I used to refer to them as boring because you only could do one exercise per muscle group per session. And I get the reasoning behind it but Let's be honest guys, it doesn't have to be like this. It's boring because you make it boring. I mean yeah, the problem for me in the past was that I thought it was too little volume for me but that wasn't the case. It was the intensity that was the problem. I mean today doing full body only three days a week is my go to workout split. I never, I never thought it would come to this because I programmed them to my liking. I think this is also why I like full body splits is that you really have to, really have to think outside the box when making them to make them both enjoyable and efficient. I used to think they were boring but no it's my favorite type of training because I adjusted them to my liking and to be fair I do like them so much because one you practice and train each muscle group very frequently which I believe is one of the most important things when it both comes to developing strength and hypertrophy and two they make you really put in the work they make you really go all in because when you're done with a full body workout if programmed correctly you got nothing left in the tank and you need a rest day to survive you don't only kinda need and kinda want a rest day you actually need one because you can't do another session the day afterwards and I always used to be like the one who wanted to train at least four to five times a week but now when I maybe also got a lot of other things I want to do outside the gym the full body workout is as well the most suitable alternative for me and I would recommend it as one of the best routines out there for any experience level really because they're so superior in so many ways if you ask me According to studies as well, the majority of people will benefit more to these kinds of workouts for both strength and hypertrophy. But hear me out. It depends on individual goals and attributes to this as well. I mean, even though I believe a full body route is greatly beneficial whether you aim for hypertrophy or strength, it may not be the one for everyone out there. That's why I say the majority. I mean, everyone's got different goals. 
different tools to develop in the gym and so on but generally the majority of people out there react and is experiencing great benefits from these kinds of routines now let's go back to the intensity in the past i preferred a more volume dominant workout regime due to the feeling the sensation of the pump of the direct muscle activation and stimulus but now when I actually sling more towards the heavy, the both compound and full body approach, if you got the intensity in check and programmed wisely, god damn, that's a great feeling. And I do want to address the fat burning aspect here as well. I mean, I've been cutting since start of January and it's now more maintaining my calories, but I'm still, I'm still leaning down while I'm actually getting stronger. But it's making sense because doing almost only compounds for the whole body three times a week, I can tell you that it's burning one hell of a calories. And this is it too. Even though I'm only training three days a week, by doing a workout like this, only four to five, five exercises per session, I mean, I'm still laying on the floor after every session because it's so intense. I need a rest day to actually pull off the next working day. I need it. And that's what it's all about. I mean, when I did more volume focused training with maybe less load, I could train four to six days a week with less rest between because I could, I actually could. There were days when I took rest days when I programmed it, but otherwise, I could have trained on those days as well, but now, as I said, this is what full body workouts were meant to be. Because they're less frequent in the week, you need to work hard. I mean, actually work really hard. You need to deserve the rest days. But this is what I like about it too. It's a basic hard working method and it works so efficiently basic yet effective and I never progress so efficiently both in aesthetics and strength as I am now so what am I doing now like I said full body with a lot of compounds that's it and I want to address this one thing too what what do compound movements have in common? They're performed with a barbell. Yeah. And using and lifting with a barbell does so many things. It got a multi essential purpose. It uses the whole body. This is why I prefer the barbell back squat over a leg press or even a hack squat because it uses and works so much more than the legs. For efficient back squat, you need stabilization in the core and upper back you need balance you need bracing you need mobility everything really i do see a lot of coaches out there discussing that things like machines are superior to free weights which i don't think is entirely true and yeah one of these coaches is a bodybuilding coach and aims to talk from a more hypertrophic standpoint and I do see his point from that perspective but I still don't think it's time to to ignore the barbell movement just like that yes it depends on your aim it could benefit you more if you only care about hypertrophy and the bodybuilding route to your training but even if even a tiniest part of you want and do care about strength as well, I wanna, I wanna go the other route and recommend the barbell back squat over machines. The argument behind why machines could be greater than the barbell was that you you got more stability in the machines and you always want to lift with as much stability as possible. Yeah, true, but. I feel like 
I feel like this is just an argument for taking an easier route and looking the other way around. I totally agree that you always want as much stabilization within a lift, but why not just build up that stabilization instead of taking the shortcut? But then again, I do agree with this, these speculations if you're a bodybuilder, but otherwise I would recommend the barbell variations every day within the week. For me, it's a lot of getting as independent as possible, using as little support as possible. There will always be a limit of how little or how much support you need as an athlete, but we should always strive to be as independent as possible. Whether it comes down to the gym or everyday life. I mean, a great example of this is actually my front squats. I've always wanted to do front squats because they're one hell of an exercise. But kind of ignore them and shut them down just because my mobility in my shoulders and wrists were the limiting factor of me performing them in a safe and efficient manner. So I just switched to SSB bar squats instead. And I do love the SSB squat actually still as a variation, especially in the powerlifting area. But the principle here for me was wrong. I took the shortcut. Instead of increasing my mobility, I just took the shortcut. I realized this, so now I started to work on my mobility instead and functional limitations instead. So I could implement front squats and now, now I practice my front squats every squat session actually. So this is, this is what I want to get through within today's video actually. Don't let your limits control you. You're the one in charge. You control them. That was it for me today, guys. I hope you have a tremendous weekend. And I'll catch you on the next one.